and let everyone in. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our genetics pop up. Just letting everybody in from the waiting room. So we'll give everybody just a few minutes to join. I'm going to go ahead and get my slides up here um, and present. Hopefully, you guys can see that big screen. All right. Like I said, just giving everybody just a few minutes to join. Um, had a couple people in the waiting room. Oh, and I just realized, let me stop sharing real quick because I need to share my sound for this next part. Um, yeah, let's make sure, there we go. Um, all right. And I'm guessing if maybe somebody can tell me, um, Jamie or Jen, are you seeing my the black bars like we sometimes see when I? Yeah, black box. Okay. Yes. All right, then I'm going to ask it, Jamie if you don't mind admitting people from the waiting room so I can keep mine minimized so people can see my screen. Hopefully, I've got all the boxes off to the side now and everybody can see. So. Welcome everyone. Uh, this is our uh, October 24th, 2023 genetics pop-up. Um, we are in the last year of our grant cycle. And so we are uh, starting a new theme for our pop-ups for, for this year seven, um, which is navigating to hope. And um, today's topic for our genetics pop-up is hope through information. And we'll share with you a little bit more about what that means here in a moment. Um, I just wanted to first just give a couple Zoom logistics. I know we uh, many of us have been on Zoom here for a while now, but if you're new to Zoom, um, you can find the controls. Um, usually at the bottom bar of your screen, you can see there number one is to mute and unmute. Number two is for video. You're welcome to keep your video on if you'd like. We are recording. Um, we're not streaming live to Facebook today, but we are recording. Um, and then number th three there uh, on the tab here, you can see is the participant list. And number four, please use the chat feature for questions that you might have, as well as um, technical issues. Um, you can uh, message those to myself. And when we get to the part of the pop-up um, where we have um, questions and answers, um, we would like to ask if you wouldn't mind raising your hand. You can find the raise hand button under the reactions tab, um, and then we'll call on you to talk. You can also put your questions in the chat if you feel more comfortable doing that. This is our funding statement. Mountain States is funded by Health Resources and Services Administration, or HRSA, um, which is part of the department, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. And we are very thankful for their funding. Um, without it, we could not do the work that we do. And if you are interested in learning more about HRSA, you can find their website at just hrsa.gov. So we'd like to just share a little bit of what we're going to do on this call today. If this, if you're new to Mountain States or new to our genetic pop-ups, we'll give you a little introduction of, about who we are. We're going to do a new um, thing we're adding this year for our pop-ups called Mentimeter, and it's a little interactive um, polling system. So um, we'll be doing that here in a moment and give you instructions on that. And then we're going to have a genetic navigator panel uh, to answer some questions and share some uh, resources and informational resources. And then we love to have part of our pop-ups um, be a uh, question and answer. This is really meant to be a place where it is safe to ask really any questions about genetics. We don't claim to have all the answers about genetics, but we do um, love to share resources and love to share uh, information to help people find answers to their questions. And so that's how we will end up our pop-up today. So my name is Christy Weiss. I'm the projects manager for Mountain States Regional Genetics Network. And you're probably asking who is MSRGN if you are not familiar with Mountain States and who are the genetic navigators. And so I'm going to play a very short um, video here that will uh, give you that um, background of who Mountain States is and who the genetic navigators are. So hopefully there's my picture. And hopefully if I click this, here is the video. 
Hello, and thank you for a few short minutes of your time. Let me tell you a little bit about the Mountain States Regional Genetics Network. Who is Mountain States Regional Genetics Network, or MSRGN for short, you might ask? MSRGN is a regional network consisting of eight states, Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, Nevada, Utah, Colorado, Wyoming, Montana, and we are funded federally by HRSA that funds the seven regional genetics networks, which includes MSRGN, along with the Family Center and the National Coordinating Center. The mission of the regional genetics networks is to increase access to genetic services for individuals and their families, including those who are underserved in our region. In 2021, Mountain States Regional Genetics Network selected eight individuals who had navigated the genetic journey for their own loved ones in their own state. These individuals became our genetic navigators and are now available to help families navigate genetics. Genetic navigators offer resources, guidance, and navigation to others from a perspective of someone who has been there and done that and has been on a genetics path and journey for their own loved ones. Sometimes we all just need a helping hand. The ultimate goal of the program is navigating to hope for families who may be filled with questions, who may be looking for resources, or who may be experiencing barriers to accessing genetic services in their state. Hopefully everybody was able to see that and um, hear that. And let me just see if I can go to the next slide here. There we go. So um, as I mentioned, we are going to do a, a Mentimeter poll. I'm gonna stop sharing this screen and go into uh, Mentimeter. Some of you may be familiar with this program and some it might be new too. So um, what I will uh, ask is if you have another device, it can oftentimes be helpful. Um, to do this next polling part. Um, so uh, you can pull out, uh, if you're on your desktop computer or a laptop computer, you can pull out a phone. Um, or if you um, have, uh, if, if you are on a desktop, you can open up another a browser tab. And I will show you, let me go to present mode here. So it's nice and big and full screen. And um, this next slide will show you a QR code you can either scan um, and that'll take you right to uh, the Mentimeter site. Or like I said, if you are on your desktop um, or, uh, or on a, uh, a tablet or something, you can open up another tab, a browser tab and just type in www.menti.com. And then there will be a box for you to enter a code. And the code for today is 2240-1500. So there's two ways you can participate with this. You can either scan the QR code and you should go right there. Or like I said, you can just open up a, a browser, like um, a tab, like you would be opening up a website and then type in www.menti.com and enter the code 2240-1500. And I see some people have gotten it to work because I see some little hearts coming through here. So um, is there anyone that's having trouble with that that needs a little extra assistance or is everybody doing okay? All right, I'm gonna hope that everyone's doing okay and I'm gonna go to the next screen, the next slide here. Um, and this next slide is a practice question. Um, so if this, if this is your first time um, doing Mentimeter, this is just a, a warm up question just to get you kind of oriented to, to the site. So this um, question is, what is your favorite flavor of ice cream? And if you are on in the right spot, you should see a big ice cream cone and you should have a box where you can type in an answer. And I see some responses coming in. I see mint chocolate chip, mocha almond fudge, vanilla chocolate, and this is gonna create a word cloud. You can see seven people have responded. Now nine people have responded and you can see how this works. So it's kind of like a live polling type um, 
application. Oh my goodness. Extreme moose track, salted caramel coffee. Wow. Look at all those, all those names. So the ones that are the biggest um, type, the biggest font are the ones that have multiple votes. So looking like maybe vanilla, orange, sherbet, and mint chocolate chip might have a, a couple, a couple votes for, for them. All right, so it looks like we have about 16 responses. Great job practicing on that question, everyone. It looks like, I don't know, I don't know what the winner is there. Maybe orange sherbet, uh, maybe a mint chocolate chip and vanilla in a close close second and third there. All right, this next one is also a little bit of a warm up question, but um, have you come to a genetics pop-up before? So um, click the red button if, you, if no, this is your first time. The two, if you're not sure if you've been here or not before, done one of these before or yes, um, you are here again, um, you're here and back again. All right, so we have, looks like three, three no, new folks. Welcome everyone, thank you. And lots of folks coming back again, um, looking at like it's up to about 10 there. And no, no one's not sure if they've been here or not been here before or not. So again, just another warm up question. And um, I will go on to the next one here. You guys did that one really, really quickly. And this is kind of a fun one. This is our region, um, the states in our region, as you saw, heard from the video. Um, but this is to drop a pin where you live. If you don't live on our region, you are more than welcome to be here. We are so glad you're here. Just drop a pin outside our region, like either east or west or north or south, uh, depending on where you where you do live. Oh, I see one, see one outside of Texas there. Um, but it's kind of neat just to see where everybody everybody's coming from on the phone or where, where where everyone lives. So, wow, looks like we have some folks outside our region, maybe in the in the Midwest there. Um, some folks from New Mexico, Texas. I see Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, and Nevada. Anyone from Utah or in Arizona with us today? Um, so that's kind of that's kind of a fun one too. Oh, a couple more dots coming outside of our region. Great. All right. Now we'll get into the, the question of the day. Um, oh, I just saw an Arizona one pop up there. Um, this question is a is a free form question, and it's a general question um, because we are um, exploring the topic of hope um, and navigating to hope. This is a general question just asking, how do you define hope or what does the word hope mean for you and your family? And there is no right or wrong answer to this. Um, it, and it can be a short answer, a long answer. It could be a one word answer, or you can you can type a, a couple words or a, a phrase or a sentence and you'll see um, some of those pop up as people enter them. So hope is love is a big one that just came on my screen here. I'll give everybody a couple minutes because um, this one takes takes maybe a little bit more thinking. All right, I see some coming in now. Looks like about six people have responded. And this one's going to make a word cloud as well. Um, so you'll see everything shifting around here as, as more answers come in. I'll wait just a second to read them because I know it's tough to type in <laughs> when when you're get when you're hearing other people's answers. So it's like about 11 people have responded. Just a few more seconds here. Oh, there comes another one. And I'm seeing a chat come in. Let me just check that. You might see a black bar, black box coming up. Okay. Thanks, Ivy, for the feedback. All right. So let's read some of these. Um, hope means everything. Hope means resource and options. Light in the darkness. Future will be brighter. Positivity, a future, love, inspiration, belief in a better future, hope means answers, um, reassurance, and um, I think that one says on the side, if I'm tilting my head correctly there, hope is vision. So all great answers. Thank you for sharing. Oh, another one just came in. I'm not, I'm not seeing what it is. A future, positivity, vision, reassurance. Um, great. Thank you so much, for everyone, for sharing sharing those answers. Now, this next question is a little bit um, a little bit different, um, or a little bit the same and a little bit different. This is since we're here for a genetics pop up, and the work that Mountain States does is around um, the topics of genetics. This question is asking in regards to the topic of either genetic testing, genetic diagnosis, a genetic condition. 
Um, what does the word hope mean to you and your family in that context? And I do see that somebody just joined us from the waiting room. So we are doing a Mentimeter. If you would like to join us, um, you can see there at the top, you can open a tab and type menti.com in the browser um, window. And then you can use this code that's at the top of the screen here, 2240-1500. And you can, hopefully it'll skip you to the slide that we're on if you would like to um, respond. So again, this question is in regards to the topic, topic of genetic testing, diagnosis, condition, um, genetic condition, what does the word hope mean to you and your family? So it might be something more specific, or it might be the same answer you had for the general definition of hope or what hope means to you. Um, but um, it, might, it might change a little bit if you're thinking now specifically about a genetic testing, genetic, genetic diagnosis, or genetic condition, whether that impacts you or a loved one, or if you're here um, in a support capacity for families that you that you work with. Um, great, I see a lot's coming through. I see 11 responses coming in. So thank you everyone for responding. I'll just give it another few seconds here to see if there's anyone else still typing. Great, so some of these responses um, for the realm, oh, they're coming in fast now. Um, they're for the realm of genetics, um, our uh, actions towards goals, understanding, more information, insurance coverage, knowledge, support, possibilities, not alone, um, peace, answers, answers for a better future, clarity, there's another word future, better life, and therapies. Um, thank you all for sharing sharing your input on um, how how hope how what hope looks like um, specifically to genetics. All right. And this next one, this one might be a little bit more challenging. I made a, I made a, we started off easy and got a little bit more challenging. So this one, um, we'll see how this one goes, but this is, since today we're going to cover the topic of hope through information. Um, information is, is the focus of today's genetic pop-up. Um, there are four categories here, information about support, information about diagnosis, information about treatments, information about genetics in general. And um, you should have two sliding scales for each one of these on a scale of one to 10 uh, or zero to 10, zero being um, the least hopeful or the least difficult. Um, so one question is about hope. How much hope does this particular topic give you and how much, how difficult is this information to find or obtain? So if you can slide those sliders for each one of these categories, what you'll start to see is some dots hopefully um, appearing on this graph as you respond. And I know this might take a few minutes because you have basically two, two questions per each dot. Um, so, and it will plot it out here. So how much hope does this give you, this topic give you? And then how difficult is this information to find or obtain? So if you did 10 on this scale, it would be very difficult. If you did zero, it'd be not very difficult. If you did 10 for the hope scale, it would be a lot of hope. And if you did zero, it'd be very little hope. And I see, I think about four people have, have voted or their votes have registered. So others of you might still be sliding your finger on those sliders. We'll give everybody just a couple more minutes here to, to do this one. And you'll see as people vote that the, the balls kind of roll around a little bit. It's taking an average of everybody's um, votes there and kind of reshuffling them. All right, so I'm seeing here um, that number one and number four, um, so information about support and information about genetics in general seem to be the kind of top ones for how much hope does this give you? Um, and it looks like um, information about genetics in general is kind of a little bit more difficult to obtain maybe than information about support. And then those two and three are really close in there as well. So um, information about diagnosis and information about treatment um, are also kind of right in there between, between the, the, the one and four. So 
Thank you everybody for voting on this one. Um, it looks like they're all kind of clustered clustered there a little bit together though, kind of on the mid midway point of each of the each of the scales. But it does look like um, information about support um, is is probably the top winner on the on the hope scale there. Um, and there, if I hover over it, you can kind of see what that is the average of um, all those individual dot, dots. So that's kind of neat to see too. So if I do this four, you can see um, uh, the kind of clustering of those dots as well. And here's two and here's three. So you can see a, a, a wide variety of, of votes, but um, that's where they all kind of clustered in the average. All right. So last question, um, and hopefully you've in, enjoyed this little interactive piece of this, getting to, getting to see and hear what other people have had to say and vote today. But we're asking in this question, if there's any specific type of information, again, today's theme is hope through information. Um, so if there's any specific type of information regarding genetics that you are seeking today, um, we would love for you to share that. Um, again, we can't guarantee that we have all the information, but we sure are dedicated to helping people find information. Um, so I see one response here just came in, family supports. So if there's any other specific type of information um, that anyone has come here looking for today regarding genetics, um, please feel free to put that um put that in the in the chat. So I see one, another one that came up, how to instill hope when sharing difficult news. That is a great one. And um, I will be happy to touch on that um, when we get to our panel discussion part. So thank you for asking that. Anyone else has have any specific requests for today? Wanting to know how to get my daughter tested for mosaicism, Down syndrome, what tests to specifically ask for, okay. And then we have another one that's come in, support in general. So looking for information on support in general. And then another one that just popped up on my screen, how to help families remain hopeful. These are all great, great suggestions and great, great information. Um, some of them, like this one that's requesting this very specific test, um, might be something we want, want to take offline. We might not be covering that specific of information today, but I'm um, uh, happy, to, happy to discuss that um, maybe with one of our genetic navigators one-on-one -on -one or um, myself. I'm happy to, happy to look at that. So, okay, with that, I'm going to um, stop sharing our Mentimeter and pop back over to... Um, to our group here and just um, get ready to uh, tell you about our, um, oh, hang on, let me get, let me find my slides, um, tell you about our uh, panel discussion um, today. So I'd like to introduce you to some of our genetic navigators who are joining us today for this discussion. Um, here's a quick peak of all of our genetic navigators. They couldn't all be here today, um, but just to introduce you to them, we have known from Arizona, Jamie from Colorado, Jennifer from Montana, Mariah from Nevada, Desiree from New Mexico, Lourdes from Texas, Tiffany from Utah, and Kayla from Wyoming. And I think um, if you guys can help me out, um, I think we have Jen here today, Jamie, um, I believe, and um, Desiree. And I think I saw Mariah maybe pop in. Did I miss anybody? All right. So um, I have some questions. Um, so our genetic navigators, as you heard in the video, are individuals who have actually navigated genetics for their own loved one um, in their own state. Or their, um, and so they have experience um, in the field of genetics, navigating the field of genetics. They are not genetic professionals. They're not medical professionals. So they will not be answering medical um, questions today, but we will be answering, um, or we'll, we'll be sharing some information um, and resource questions. So I have some questions for them that we're just going to, I'm just going to pose and let, let them go round robin. So one of the questions I have for our panel discussion today is what piece of information or resource gave you the most hope when you were on your own genetic journey for your own loved one? Would anyone like to start and share a specific piece of information or resource um, that gave you the most hope on your own genetic journey? This is Jen from Montana. Yep, go ahead, Jen. The, thanks. The resource that gave me the most hope was finding other families 
that had a child with a diagnosis like my child, a rare diagnosis that was hard to find information about and being able to talk to them about their experiences and, and seeing seeing pictures of their children and their families and seeing what their life was like living with that diagnosis. It's probably the, yeah, that was probably the biggest resource for me and it's resource I'm still really grateful for. Thanks, Jen, for sharing. And it's it's the it's the people resource, right? It's the it's the one that's not a brochure or not a not a website, but the the people power. So thanks for sharing that. Other families. Anybody else would like to answer um, the question? Yeah, go ahead, Mariah. Thanks for raising your hand. <laughs> yeah, um, I would just say that I agree with you know being able to learn about other families. And then another one that was helpful to me is I, I found an organization that actually mailed me a giant packet of information that I could take with me to doctor's offices. And that was really helpful because to have it in writing and be able to flip back and forth through it. I mean, I had all the online resources too, but to have something physical that I could just, you know, turn pages and look at the, at the information that was really helpful to me. Awesome. So your yours included the the print the the brochure brochure piece. Do you want to do you want to share that organization at all? Are they still around or in existence? Yeah, it was I, um it's the myotonic dystrophy organization. And um yeah, they sent I reached out to them and they sent me a huge packet. <laughs> so awesome. It was this it was the most recent genetic diagnosis. The first one that we got was mitochondrial disease, and that was many, many years ago. So it was neat to get something like that in the mail. And like you said, helpful, helpful in a doctor's office setting, because you don't always have your electronic resource right there to yes. be able to pull up. So yes. great. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Anyone else like to answer that question? So, Go um, ahead, Jamie. <clears throat> sorry for my voice. I've been under the weather. Um, I'd agree with Jen, the people, you know, finding other families, not necessarily ones that had the same disorder, because at the time we didn't know what the diagnosis was, but um, also um, having, finding specific physicians that were there to um, help along the way that were interested in um, finding a diagnosis. So finding that team that really um, aligns with you. And then um, just the research of just knowing having a background in, um, you know, science and, um, medical profession, um, having that, um, comfort and knowledge of what I had already known. Um, but I'd say the families, other families connecting with them was the biggest one. Great. Thanks for sharing that, Jamie. Um, and like Jen, Jen, you like the people power part, not only on the support side, but also um, you bring up a great point about the team side, right? Um, the care team um, and finding the right fits for your family as well. So thanks for highlighting that. Desiree, did you have anything to add before we go on to our next question? Um, I agree with both Jen and Jamie where, um, you know, having both sides of the support team was great. Um, for my end, um, my daughter's still on unclassified, so we still don't have a lot of answers, but one of the things that did help me quite a bit when we first started was, um, we had to have her registered with the uh, digital skeletal registry. And there was a woman there that was extremely helpful. And, um, we actually became friends and she, she was really instrumental to helping guide me as far as research, um, that I could do on my own. So she was extremely helpful to me. That's wonderful. And was that through a support organization that ran that registry or no, it was, no, it was just, next? it was just her, just her. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, one thing I was going to add before we move on to the next question, and I'm just going to see if I can share my screen. I didn't learn about this resource until quite a bit after um, uh, we had been on the genetics journey for a while, but it's something that we include in our genetic navigator training and it's called guard genetic and rare disease information center and uh, mariah's comment made me think of it um, because um this is actually an organization where you can call and talk with someone um, that is a genetic information specialist. Um, they are, again, not there to provide a medical diagnosis or, or medical um, uh, medical uh, 
they're not medical professionals, but they are there to be information specialists and help you find information if you do have a diagnosis already for um, your child or loved one or someone that you're working with. And um, they have a toll-free number, um, 1-888-205-2311. You can also contact them with the contact form. And here's a, a bullet pointed list of some of the things that they can help provide information on. And so I, when I found out about this organization, I did contact them um, and ask them some, some questions and they, they put together both an electronic packet of information. So uh, in e email form, but they also mailed me a packet of information um, about things like finding specialists, um, rare diseases, patient organizations, clinical studies, um, organizations that might provide support, either financial or disability or travel support. Um, different support for caregivers. So a lot of different information that they have available. And this um, is uh, not disease specific. So it's run by um, a department at NIH, um, which is the National Center for Advancing T Translational Sciences. And it stands for Genetic and Rare Disease Information Center. So that's it's um, a lot of, it's a big umbrella uh, for a lot of different um, rare diseases and genetic conditions. So just wanted to share that. You can find them at rarediseases.info.nih.gov if you want to get to this website that I'm on. Or as I said, there's a 1-800 or 1-888 number, 1-800 number, and a contact form as well that you can um, share. So I will put this in the chat and as I stop sharing my screen here so that anybody who would like to take a look at that um, as a possible resource, they can look at that. So there we go, that should be in the chat. Okay, so the next um, question we have for our panel um, is, um, we have just completed uh, last week or uh, two weeks ago, I guess now, coming up on two weeks ago, our third virtual genetics summit, which is Mountain State's um, a uh, large educational uh, event that we have yearly. It's actually our fifth gen genetic summit, um, just our third virtual one. Um, the other two were in person uh, back in our last grant cycle. And so with completing that, we now have an archive of um, 12 different talks for three years. We have 36 different topics to talks on genetics. And so I'd like to ask our panel if there is a um, some information that they gathered from any of those talks over the years that might have been helpful to you all or helpful to those who you've been working with um, in your genetic navigator role um, that provided some information that you thought was 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 helpful, either again to yourself or to others um, that you've been working with in your genetic navigator role. So would anybody like to start and share share a a, a a find, a, a favorite find from the genetic summit over the last couple of years. Yeah, go ahead, Mariah. The one that I that I thought was most helpful from the one that we just had um, was the one about doing the care mapping thing. I forget exactly what it was called, but it's where you know you basically map out what's your care team and then what's most important to your life and your child. And I feel like something like that would be really helpful to bring to the doctor's offices, especially how, at least with my kids, and I, I know a lot of other families too, you have lots of different specialists and they don't all communicate. They say that they do, but they really do not often. And it would be helpful because you could show that to them and it would be a way to kind of get them all onto the same literal page. Yeah, I love that one. And you were exactly right. It's called care mapping. And so um, I will be putting a link in the chat, um, which it's, it's this year's 2023 Genetic Summit um, landing page. And it was our first talk. It was by Kara Coleman. Um, it was our first talk of our, our 2023 Genetic Summit um, on care mapping. So thank you for bringing, bringing mm -hmm. that up. And um, she had some great resources at the end of her talk. If you've never yeah. done a care map, before, never heard of this concept. There are some great resources, some workbooks, um, worksheets out there that can help get you started as well. And I see Jamie- It made me want to do one for yeah. my kids. I've never done one before and, I'm, and it would really help with a particular, with one of my kids and some issues that we're dealing with now. And I, I think it would be helpful. Yeah, I think it's a great communication tool. Um, yeah. for sure with the, with not only for yourself and your family, but then to take it and share it with others that you're, that are on your care team. Absolutely. 
Great. Thanks for sharing that, Mariah. And I see Jamie's hand up. Go ahead, Jamie. Yep. So um, she took the one I was going to say for this year, care mapping. But um, for, for the first virtual genetic summit, I really liked um, Mariah Gillespie's um, one on um, rare um, research, trying to gather a team and um, get them on board for doing research for a rare genetic disorder. Kind of the, um, I guess, not timeline, but a line of activities or things that you have to do and different organizations to contact to try and get the ball rolling and um, get people involved in um, doing research for a rare genetic disorder. Um, last year, I'm gonna give a shout out to Jen and Mines um, uh, while you're waiting talk. And then for this year, in addition to the care mapping, I also think, you know, the um, siblings, I can't remember the name of the talk, but the one about um, uh, you're not forgetting the siblings and, you know, breaking the news to the siblings and how to include them in um, the process. I don't know, Christy, if you can remember the name of that one. Yeah, I'm searching as fast as I can and cutting and pasting. You threw a lot at me there, Jamie. So I'm I'm trying to keep up with you in the chat. But yeah, um, I'll I'll work on getting that last one there. I'm just getting your and Jen's here, and that's pasted in the chat for while you're waiting on a genetics appointment. And um, then the other one I think you said was the sibling um, communicating communicating to siblings um, for this year's yeah. talk. Is that is that the one you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. I was trying to hit one from each of the virtual some. But. Yeah, so um, that was Abby and Amanda's talk on um, communicating about genetic diagnosis with children and siblings, and I'm pasting that right now. So, all right, Jen's got her hand up, and I see that you are you got got it in there. Thank you, Jen, for cutting and pasting it. So I will paste the link right below it. Go ahead. Uh, thanks. It, it's been interesting because you know we didn't plan ahead about what we were going to talk about today, and so I've been crossing off my list. Um, as Mariah went, I was like, oh, I was going to talk about the care mapping and then Jamie talked about the siblings. Um, and the siblings one is really uh, near and dear to my heart because I have five other children besides my child with a rare diagnosis. And I, and I feel like with all the attention that we have to pay to our child that has extra needs, sometimes I wonder about what that experience is like from them. And the second part of what they talked about in the sibling one, in addition to being able to communicate about a genetic diagnosis um, is some things about what that experience might be like for the siblings. And I think in some ways that draws us right back to that care mapping, because as we're mapping about our child, um, they're not an island by themselves. There's these other people that live in their homes and these other people that are experiencing day-to-day um, -day experiences with them. And so there was a lot of great resources on the sibling one about books um, for siblings. And just, I think that was a really resource packed um, a really resource packed session. And um, yeah, and like I said, I think the siblings and that whole family perspective are so important, which is why I think I like that one and the care map being both. Great. Thank you for reminding me, Jen, about the the resource sheet. I'm going to, I'm going to put that as a specific um, link here um, for the siblings one, because I thought they really, I, I think Amanda uh, put a lot of time into um, really getting mm -hmm. a lot of books um, uh, and other resources for the siblings. So I'm just, that's a PDF that we just uh, uploaded to the website. So we have that as just a standalone PDF. So that's in the chat now for you as well. Well, and I, I should add that the talk that Jamie and I did about why you were waiting, you know, has to do with the fact that there's so many families that have to wait a long time to get a genetics appointment, or maybe they're waiting a long time as they're going through different testing. And so it can uh, be hard to know what kinds of things you can do that would be helpful for your child or family while you're waiting. And so Jamie and I took some different perspectives on, on how to do that. So that one is also packed with different resources, um, both state resources and um, national resources, because a lot of people end up having to wait to, to figure that diagnosis out or wait to get in to see a genetic a geneticist or a genetic counselor. Absolutely. Yeah, you guys, that yours is jam-packed. I remember your, a QR code that you guys had embedded in there that, that took you to a lot of uh, those resources as well. So, all right. How about you, Desiree? Any things to add that you'd like to um, 
highlight for the, any of the genetic summits? I feel like we're already overdoing the whole sibling thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Sounds really, like you like that one. <laughs> it's really true. Um, one of the things that, that was really great with us was we had a doctor that um, we specifically chose him because he had a bunch of little girls and we thought, you know, he's going to look at our daughter instead of, oh, wow, this interesting case, which for the most part, that's her other doctor had been doing that. So what was really great about him is he turned around and he brought our older daughter into, into everything that was being discussed. Um, and it made a really huge difference, you know, where before the other doctor was, it was constant, this constant focus on, on my daughter with the medical issues. And um, we, I read about something called a glass child, which is basically, you know, the other child or children become just, you kind of see through them as you focus on the issues of the child with um, the, the medical issues. And for our family, we just really respected the fact that this doctor came forward and he was like, no, he's like, you're part of the family. You need to know what's going on. And he really brought that to our attention where, you know, that maybe that's not something you you think about as much, but from that point on, we definitely involved my older daughter with everything. Thank you for highlighting that and sharing that experience, Desiree. That's a great a great reminder that um, that there's the there's the talk. You can listen to the talk, but then there's the action, right? There's the actual um, putting putting that into place um, in your own family. So thanks for sharing that. Um, I'm going to share two from my perspective that I thought were really helpful. Um, even though this one was three three years ago now, um, I think it's still relevant today, maybe more so than it was um, three years ago. Um, but I really enjoyed the talk by Brendan Lee um, on gene therapy. Um, because that's a hot topic in the genetic treatment world um, today. And so um, he did, I thought, a great overview of all the different types of, of gene therapy. Um, I can remember, I think the COVID um, mRNA vaccines had just come out at the time back three years ago, and he uh, maybe that year. Um, and so he talked about that in relation to gene therapy, um, and then the, all the other different types of platforms. So um, I felt like that one was a really great kind of a primer. Um, if you're new to that term or new to that word, um, just trying to understand um, the risks versus benefits of different platforms, the immunogenicity and um, uh, different uh, side effects and, and toxicities and, and benefits of different types of platforms for gene therapy. So that's one I would highlight. And then somebody had asked um, in the on our Mentimeter about, um, about hope and delivering, I think something along the lines of delivering diagnosis with hope. And so we had a great talk um, also back in 2021 um, about um, delivering a diagnosis with hope. And so um, I want to just highlight that one too for the person who asked about that specific piece of information. Um, and uh, I felt like that was a really great, great talk by um, a genetic counselor, um, Le Leila. And let me just put that one in here. Uh, uh, Leila and Andoni um, gave that talk. All right. Um, and so anybody else want to highlight anything before we before we move on and 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 open uh, our last 15 minutes here for some some Q and A? Any others? All right. I will share my screen now and just I, I've been posting um in the chat all these different links, but I want to show you where you can explore all of these. Uh, so let me get that screen up here and um highlight that for you all. Um, so we have just um, published our recordings for the Genetic Summit 2023, but we also have all of our recordings up um, for the other two genetic summits as well. And so if you uh, scan this QR code here, um, it will take you to what we have just added to our website called our Genetic Summit Library. And you'll come to a page that looks like this where you can um, click on each one of um, these 2021, 2022, or 2023, and it will take you to a page that has all 12 talks on it. And then you will be able to click on whichever talk you would like to listen to. The YouTube um, 
recording is embedded there. If you are a professional um, and would like to claim C CME or continue, continuing medical education or continuing education units, um, we do have that available for MDs, nurses, uh, uh, um, physicians assistants, uh, genetic counselors, and pharmacists. Um, if you would like to claim genetic uh, or, or, or credit for those, um, that will be available until the end of this year, um, December 31st, 2023. So that's how you get to all of these things that we've been talking about and all the links that are in the chats. Um, if you'd like to see, if you'd like to peruse all 36 topics um, and all 36 talks, um, you can go to the Genetic Summit Library to find out some more. All right, with that, it's time for your all's questions. And we um, really encourage um, uh, dialogue and, and conversation during this part. And no question is a stupid question. No question is off limits. Um, we want to um, encourage this to be a place where anyone can ask a question. I do see my chat just popped up. Um, and I have a question. What do we do if we haven't received any certificates for our CEUs. So Anne, I'm gonna probably have to take that one offline um, and, and, and investigate that a little bit more. If you're talking about the 2023, those are not been processed yet. We've just finalized the recordings and pulling down all the information um, and are processing that to send to our accreditors. So I'm gonna take that one offline. If you don't mind emailing me, um, we can talk more about that. I can look into the other ones. So I'm gonna stop sharing here just so I can see everybody's faces and make sure I can see anybody raising their hands. If you do have a question you'd like to ask it live, feel free to raise your hand with the emotions, or sorry, the reactions tab there, or feel free to type it into the chat. Um, and we can um, we can answer it from there. But again, our topic today, hope through information. So if there are some information pieces, I know some people had asked some specific for some specific resources. So if we haven't covered those yet, I, th I saw one about family supports. Um, and so we can talk a little bit about that if we haven't answered any of those specific questions yet. I did see the one about the specific test um, for Down syndrome, and I'd be happy to chat with that person offline as well, because I don't know that I have that information right at the tip of my tongue. So, but I'll pause for a second and just, I'm not seeing any others come in through the chat, but would anybody here today, we have a smaller group today. So feel free if you would like to just raise your hand or come on, you know, turn your, turn your, or unmute your line and ask a question. You can do that as well. Got a quiet bunch today. I'll, I'll ask a question to you all. Do you like the Mentimeter part? We just added that for our genetic summits this uh, this round. And we'd love to know if you'd like that and if we should keep doing that for our, our two coming up. Yes, I see a yes in the chat. All right, thanks, Anne. All right. Any other questions? If not, I can I can share a little bit more. Um, and maybe that will prompt prompt some folks to have some questions. I wanted to, to tell everyone how you can connect with our genetic navigators, um, as that is a really big part of our genetic summits, is making sure that you all know that we have our genetic navigator program and we have folks that you can um, reach out to and have um more conversations, more questions and answers with. Um, four of them are here today that you've just gotten to hear talk, um, Jamie, Jen, Mariah, and Desiree. But um, if you're looking for someone and you're, the, the folks um, that we're speaking today are not from your state, you can reach out to the person that is specifically the genetic navigator for your state. And so on your screen, you should see here um, all eight of our states and the names of our genetic navigators. Um, and the way to find them is really just to take the name of the state. So for instance, and you can reach known at Arizona in the word genetic, no S on the end. So Arizona genetic at gmail.com. And all of those email addresses are formatted like that. Colorado genetic for Jamie, Montana genetic for Jennifer, uh, Mariah's at Nevada genetic, Desiree's at New Mexico genetic, Florida's at Texas genetic, Tiffany at Utah genetic, and Kayla at Wyoming Genetic. Um, you can also reach out to me at, at General MSRGN. Um, I work um, and help uh, support all the genetic navigators in, across our region. So I can be reached at KWIS at Mountain States 
genetics.org. And we got the QR code there. And we do have an evaluation survey um, that um, we have at the, we'd, like, we'd love for your feedback on at the end of today's um, uh, pop-up. And let me just go ahead and pull that um, and put that in um, the chat so that if I saw a couple folks had to leave a little early today. So let me just pop that into the chat here. Um, if you do need to head off, um, we would love um, for you to share some feedback with us on the genetic pop-up today. And I just saw another question pop in the uh, chat here. Um, what role do you see public health nurses can play in providing hope to families? Great question, Anne. And I'm going to pose that to our panel and see if anybody has any thoughts. Go ahead, Jen. Oh, she's well, unmuted. I got it. I, I was having trouble finding my unmute because, you know, Zoom is a brand new thing. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So whenever I see that, and I don't know if you work um, in public health, but one of the things that's been really helpful to me when my family has been working with other people was their willingness to help connect me to other families. And it seemed like for a while, people were afraid to, to try to connect people because of privacy issues. But sometimes when you have families that are in similar situations, and if you're talking to them the way I think a public health nurse is and learning all those details, you find out families that you're seeing have similarities. And I know in the past, I've had people ask me, you know, I'm working with a, I know another family that um, I'd like to put in touch with you if you're okay with that. And then I've shared my information. So I think that's one way that you can provide hope is like, you're not the only person that I've seen this week, this month, this year that might be experiencing this. I think a lot of families have a tendency to feel isolated and like they might be the only one. Great. And Jen, do you mind talking to the privacy piece of that and how that's worked the best um, in the situations where you are connected with somebody? Because I think I feel like I've heard that uh, as a concern mm -hmm. a lot of times, especially from the early intervention folks that we that we work with or public health nurses. So how did it work in your situation? Did you give them your contact information and mm -hmm. then they pass that on to the other parent? Yeah. So I gave them my contact information and said, you know, or even sent them an email sometimes so that it would be written that way. Like I give you permission to share my contact information with um, other families, other families, because that's part of it is like giving that permission to share it with other families, um, to connect families with each other. And then, um, and then we start connecting each other after that. So once you get a few of us connected in a situation like that, we all start connecting and finding each other and sharing resources. So it can feel a little tricky. And if it feels tricky, um, then I recommend like asking somebody, you know, that you work with, because I think the importance of making those connections is, is so important. Thanks for sharing that, Jen. And I see Jamie's hands up. Go ahead, Jamie. I think the verbiage and the way you talk about um, a disorder, genetic disorder, or any kind of disorder or disability in that, um, you know, the, the child is a person first and um, not the disorder. And you know, there's always hope and, and um, potential and exposure to, you know, typical childhood things are important and not always just be all encompassed by therapies, but to experience those typical childhood experiences and um, interaction with their peers and the verbiage around a disorder that they are a person first. Thanks for sharing that, Amy. Great, great advice, great tips. Hopefully that answered your question, Anne, and gave you some 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 thoughts or tips. Um, any follow-up question to that? Um, or um any more or additional different type of questions anyone would like to ask? Oh, she says yes, thank you. All right. Um, another place I just, I'm just going back to thinking about what came through on the Mentimeter and some of the things that came up in that word cloud about specific information that uh, folks were looking for today. Um, the family supports piece, I'd like to give a shout out. Um, 
not only to the genetic navigators, but also to the other um, HRSA grants that exist in our states, which are the Family to Family Health Information Centers. And we have two representatives uh, as through our genetic navigators here, um, Jen and Jamie. So I don't know, I don't want to put you guys on the spot, but I know that can be a huge um, area for family support, um, as well as connecting to other groups and things. So do you, Jen or Jamie, want to speak to either of those um, entities in your state? Yeah, this is Jen, and um, I'll start. And then Jamie, if you want to add, um, I hope you'll add. So I do work at the Family to Family um, Health Information Center in Montana. Um, every state and territory has one, and so do some of the um, Native American reservations in New Mexico and Arizona. Um, and I'll put a link in the chat so you guys can find the one that's that's in your state. They're called different things in every state. In Montana, we call ours the Montana Family to Family Health Information Center. And we help families connect families to resources and to each other. And then we also try to help providers and policymakers understand the different complexities of having a child with multiple medical needs or multiple medical diagnosis in your home or that you're a caregiver for. And so we, uh, like Christy was saying, we're open to every question that people call and ask us about in different states. There's different focuses depending on the needs of that state that, um, oh, there you go, Christy, thank you. <laughs> Christy put it in the chat. Um, Jamie, is there anything that you'd like to add? Um, yeah, so everything that um, Jen said, you know, we're here to answer questions and support um, families. And in Colorado, our um, our name is um, Family Voices Colorado. And we, our primary focus is to help on the medical side and um, insurance side. So helping families get on Medicaid, um, qualify, help them determine if they qualify for the Medicaid waiver, help them fill out the applications, as well as um, Social Security, and if they get denied or if they get dropped, or um, right now they're having the uh, spin down from COVID, so there's a lot of um, things going on with that, helping, so just helping families through the logistical things with those um, entities. Thanks, Jen and Jamie. I also added um, a link. So in addition to the Family to Family Health Information Centers, there's also an organization called Parent to Parent USA, um, and they do a lot with parent to parent matches. Um, so helping match a family to another family who has the same diagnosis or similar diagnosis or similar symptoms. Um, and those are state-based as well. So some of those are co-located um, with Family to Family Health Information Centers, and then some of them are so completely separate. So the page that I linked there will give you the map to see if there's one in your state um, to connect, connect with. Um, so I just wanted to make sure we touched on that family supports piece, because um, as we saw in our little grid, um, support uh, family support and information about support um, is a huge uh, piece of hope for a lot of families, as you heard Jen talk about and Jamie and Mariah and, and uh, Desiree say today that connecting with other families um, and not feeling so alone is was a huge piece of their journeys. So as I check out the time, we are about two minutes to the top of the hour, and I just have one more slide. I want to one or two more slides. I wanted to just share here, just as reminders of things coming up um, in our Mountain States world. Um, we will be having some other genetics pop ups um, coming up, both um, in December and um, in February. So our next one will be in Dece will be December sixth. And our um, last one will be in 2024, which will be February 22nd. Um, we usually celebrate Rare Disease Day on that uh, date, um, close to close to Rare Disease Day. So February 22nd will be our Rare Disease Genetics pop up, and December 6th um, we will have another pop up. So. Um, if you are not on our mailing list and you do not get our newsletters, um, please uh, scan this QR code and sign up for those. That's how we communicate a lot about these um, pop-ups is through um, channels like our newsletter and um, other, other uh, Mountain States news. Um, so um, if you are not getting our newsletters, please do sign up. It's a 60 second form. It'll add you to our, our mailing list um, so you can get updates on those other pop-ups and other things um, happening in Mountain States. 
And I will be happy to stick on for a couple minutes here. Um, I know we're at the top of the hour and people have other things to do, possibly um, other calls to be on and other, other appointments. So um, with that, I will just thank you all so much for being here. I want to thank our panel for answering our questions. Um, they are available for more conversation as our genetic navigators, so please reach out to them. Um, but thank you all for being here, and please please share the new, share the word that we have these pop ups going on um, with friends, families, colleagues. Um, and our next one is December sixth. So with that, I will say thank you all again, and I will stay on here and just hang out. If there's anybody that has a specific question, I'm going to stop recording. So um, if you wanted to ask something offline, that's okay.